My name is Andrew Barbas. This presentation is on ulcerative colitis. The objectives of this presentation will be as follows. Number one, understand the epidemiology and pathophysiology of ulcerative colitis. Number two, understand the clinical manifestations of ulcerative colitis. Number three, understand the diagnostic studies used to establish the diagnosis. And number four, understand the medical and surgical therapies used in the treatment of ulcerative colitis. We will review the epidemiology, pathophysiology, clinical manifestations, gross and histologic appearance, diagnosis, and medical and surgical management of ulcerative colitis. Let's start with the epidemiology of ulcerative colitis. It is much more common in developed countries and is rare in Asia, Africa, and South America. The incidence is four to six cases per 100,000 adults, and the prevalence is estimated at 40 to 100 cases per 100,000 adults. Patients of all ages are susceptible to ulcerative colitis, but it is most common in patients younger than 30 years old. Let's review the basic pathophysiology of ulcerative colitis. It is characterized by significant inflammation of the colon extending proximally from the rectum in continuous fashion. The inflammation predominantly affects the mucosa and submucosa and is not transmural in nature, a feature distinguishing it from Crohn's disease. The precise etiology of ulcerative colitis has not been elucidated and is an area of active investigation. Environmental factors and infectious agents have been postulated to be contributory, but the exact mechanisms are unknown. The typical clinical presentation is rather nonspecific. It frequently includes abdominal pain, bloody diarrhea, and bleeding per rectum, associated anemia, and hypoalbuminemia. Let's review the clinical manifestations of ulcerative colitis in greater detail. In terms of intestinal involvement, ulcerative colitis frequently causes bleeding from inflamed mucosa, leading to iron deficiency anemia. In some cases, ulcerative colitis can progress to fulminant colitis or even toxic megacolon, a very serious condition with high risk of mortality. Emergency surgery is commonly required for management of these extreme manifestations of ulcerative colitis. Additionally, the presence of ulcerative colitis increases a person's risk of developing colorectal cancer and frequent surveillance with colonoscopy is advised. There are several extra intestinal conditions associated with ulcerative colitis as well. Arthritis, ankylosing spondylitis, erythema nodosum, primary sclerosing cholangitis, and uveitis are commonly associated conditions that should be considered when evaluating patients with ulcerative colitis. In ulcerative colitis, the rectum is always involved with inflammation extending proximally in the colon for a variable extent. The gross appearance of the affected bowel is characterized by hyperemic friable mucosa, as shown in the picture. Ulceration can range from small superficial erosions to complete mucosal ulceration. Pseudopolyps may be present, which are areas of regenerating mucosa amidst surrounding severe ulceration. Generally, the inflammation is limited to the colon and the terminal ileum is unaffected, although backwash ileitis may occur from adjacent colonic inflammation. Finally, foci of cancer may be found amidst the inflammatory milieu. When the colonic mucosa is examined under the microscope, it is characterized by crypt abscesses, vascular congestion, and irregular branching of crypts, as depicted here. Let's discuss establishing the diagnosis of ulcerative colitis. Ulcerative colitis is frequently a diagnosis of exclusion after other disease processes have been ruled out, including infectious causes and Crohn's disease. The gold standard for diagnosis is colonoscopy with biopsy, and this also helps establish the extent of colonic involvement. Let's move on to management considerations with ulcerative colitis. The first-line therapies are anti-inflammatory agents, including sulfasalazine and other 5-ASA agents. Immunosuppressive medications are employed for more severe disease, including corticosteroids, azathioprine, 6-mercaptopurine, and infliximab. Let's discuss the indications for surgical intervention for ulcerative colitis. Ultimately, one-third of patients with ulcerative colitis will require surgery in their lifetime. Indications for emergency surgery include massive clonic bleeding and toxic megacolon. 
Another major indication for surgery is the development of colon cancer. Patients with ulcerative colitis are at increased risk, and surveillance with annual colonoscopy is recommended starting 10 years after disease onset. If dysplasia is noted on biopsies, this is generally an indication for colectomy. Another indication for surgery is the failure of medical therapy. This can be defined as a failure to control symptoms, prolonged treatment with corticosteroids, or malnutrition with growth impairment in children. The surgical approach taken depends on the clinical scenario. In an emergency setting such as fulminant colitis or toxic megacolon, a subtotal colectomy with end ileostomy is performed. The focus in this scenario is rapid removal of the diseased colon, which is causing life-threatening complications and subsequent resuscitation and recovery in an ICU setting. In contrast, an elective procedure for ulcerative colitis generally involves a total proctocolectomy to remove all diseased tissue, including the colon and rectum. Reconstruction is then undertaken by the construction of an ileal pouch to act as a neorectum with an anastomosis then performed between the ileal pouch and the anus. Alternatively, an endoleostomy can be constructed if preservation of bowel continuity is not a primary consideration. This diagram illustrates the performance of an ileal pouch anal anastomosis. First, the ileal pouch is created using a linear stapler applied to the terminal ileum. Second, the ileal pouch is anastomosed to the anus using a circular stapling device. In summary, ulcerative colitis is characterized by mucosal inflammation extending proximally from the rectum and inv involving a variable extent of colon. Patients often present with abdominal pain and bloody diarrhea. There are frequently extra-intestinal manifestations affecting a variety of organ systems. Medical management is first-line therapy, and surgery is reserved for the development of emergent complications or refractory disease.